Coming up, I'll share top career moves you need to make before you're 30, and then how Zoom's new product may make people quit. And then 42% of developers are considering leaving. We'll break that down, and I coach you up. Coaching you to have the competitive edge to make more money and make more impact. This is the Ken Coleman Show. I'm Ken. So excited that you are joining us, those of you that are live and those that are watching later and listening later. All right, let's dive into this. You know, uh, I now have the advantage, sadly, Alex, of being the middle-aged guy. Uh, I I turned 48 uh, later this month, and I know some of you are aghast right now. I know what you're thinking. There's no way, Ken, that you're going to be 48. I know. I look at myself in the mirror every day and say the same thing. But I digress. <laughs> Do you have to point out in today's world that you're joking? Or is sarcasm still detectable? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, but I am 48. I will be soon. And as I look back at, on my life in the decades of my 20s and my 30s and good gracious, my 40s. Uh, I want to share with you what I believe is extremely practical advice for those of you in your 20s and, and then for those of you who may be parent or, or, or grandparent or maybe befriend somebody in their 20s and you just want to pull your arm up alongside of them and give them some good advice. Uh, this is really fun for me because as I look back on my life, I was always an intentional kid. I just always was. Uh, always ambitious. And so I wish that I had this advice when I was in my 20s. So here we go. Let's break it down. These are five moves to make in your career before you turn 30. Number one, learn how to be a good follower. Learn how to be a good follower. Now, this is going to make some of you in your 20s go, uh, huh? Hey, I don't want to work for the man. I don't want to follow anybody. Hold on. Because I would suggest with great confidence that when you become a good follower, you have the opportunity to become a great leader. Because good followers are automatically potential to be good leaders. Because it is the good follower who understands what it's like to deal with authority in a healthy way that they can then translate that in their leadership one day. They know what poor leadership looks like and yet they still know how to deal with poor leadership. They know what great leadership looks like and as a result have thrived under great leadership. The idea that I must follow somebody at some point in my life, and maybe for a large portion of my life, and even when you work for yourself, you still follow the rules of the land, the rules of your state. So this idea of having a spirit of humility and a spirit of teachability to say, you know what, I'm going to learn how to be a good follower, a good team member, a good worker. Learn to be a good follower because it allows you the opportunity to be a great leader. Number two, number two move, become a connector. I have shared many times on this show, I'll share it again, that one of the most important books I ever got was a graduation gift from my father. I was graduating high school and he bought me the book by Harvey McKay, who is a uh, legendary envelope CEO, CEO of an envelope company, but then became a, a great speaker and a, and a best-selling author. And Harvey's shtick, if you will, his content and the, and the source of the book, Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty, was how to connect his big takeaway was you need to have people that you could call at three in the morning and ask for $5,000, not because you're going to do it. But the idea is, is when life throws its junk at you, its storms, its detours, its potholes, you need people in your life. You're going to grow a great company. You're going to be a multimillionaire selling envelopes for heaven's sakes. You got to understand the art of connecting. Dig your well before you're thirsty. This is the number two move. Become a connector for you and for others. Let me explain that back part. 
Not just a connector for you. Everybody who's listening and watching right now understands what I'm saying when I say become a connector for opportunities for you. Yes. But also in your 20s, learn the art of connecting to other people for them. You are essentially the bridge between one person and another. And if you become a connector, not just for you, but for others, woo, it's going to come back to you. The great Zig Ziglar used to talk about this. The law of reciprocity. If you spend your time helping others get what they want, you'll get what you want. That's the idea. Number three, always be learning. Oh, my goodness. If you can get this in your 20s, your 30s and 40s and 50s are going to be multiplying decades. What do I mean here? Become a lifelong learner. Develop habits for always learning. Always be learning. That's the third move. Always be learning. Learners become leaders. There's a pattern here. If you become a good follower, one day you'll potentially be a great leader. And if you are always learning you will not be able to hold yourself back from opportunities to lead. Fourth, discover your sweet spot. I use this analogy because most people get it. A baseball bat, a tennis racket, a golf club. There is a spot on each of those sporting instruments that have been engineered to when it strikes the ball in that spot, maximum performance. Speed, distance, you get the drill accuracy and so we've developed a very simple three-part strategy for finding your own sweet spot you discover what you do best that's your talent you discover work that really lights you up you look forward to it and you love it when you do it and then you discover what motivates you we call that mission talent plus passion plus mission equals purpose you are doing work that you were created to do you are on purpose and there's no lid to your potential. That's what I mean by discovering your sweet spot. By the way, if you're new to the program, you can get the Get Clear Career Assessment at KenColeman.com. It's a 20-minute assessment that will spit out your purpose statement and show you what your sweet spot is. And number five, get a mentor. Get a mentor in your 20s. Get the idea of being around people that are older than you. If you're in your 20s, that mentor could be in their 30s. That mentor could be in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond. The idea here is, is early on in life, discover the superpower of the sage. The older man or woman in your life that can give you not just knowledge, but wisdom. They can help you in times of, 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 of confusion. They can help you in times of great opportunity. Which way do I go? Having a mentor is vital. I'm very clear on this. I believe in this. I have mentors still in my life. That sage in your life, in multiple areas of your life, is a superpower. Let's quickly review the five moves you need to make before you turn 30. You make these moves professionally, it is setting you up for tremendous, tremendous propulsion in your 30s and 40s. Number one. Learn how to be a good follower. Number two, be a good connector. Always be learning. Number three, number four, discover your sweet spot. And number five, get a mentor. Oh, if you do this before you're 30, you're going to be so clear and so confident. And you're going to change your world, your section of the world. This is the Ken Coleman Show. You were created to fill a unique role through your work, but it can feel overwhelming to figure out what that is. That's why I created the Get Clear Career Assessment. In just 15 minutes, you'll get customized results that clarify what you do best, the work you love to do, and the results that motivate you. All this helps you discover what you were born to do. And you'll get a list of professional possibilities to help you in your job search. To get started, go to kencoleman.com slash assessment. Welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show, coaching you up so that you have the competitive edge to make more money, more impact. And l listen to me, you are in a competition and you better wake up to it if you haven't. By the way, uh, in the chat room here on YouTube, 
I was using the sweet spot analogy, the golf club, and one of our uh, viewers, our live viewers in the chat room, CMC, <laughs> line of the day. Somebody removed the sweet spot on all of my golf clubs. <laughs> Wee! Boy, I know that feeling. Uh, it, it, sometimes it's from swing to swing. Like, a, a swing off the tee, oh, sweet spot. Swing in the fairway, like you've never picked up a golf club in your life. That's the game. That's the nature of it. Love the comment, CMC. Thanks for tuning in. By the way, if you're watching live, give us a thumbs up. Uh, that helps us in the rankings. Let's go. All you got to do, I saw one click as I said it. A little thumbs up button right there below me in the video. Just click it. Everybody watch it. No excuses. Let's go. And then those of you in the chat room who have done it, guilt everybody else into doing it. That way I don't have to. Uh, all right. So I talk about ZipRecruiter every day. Uh, I'm thrilled with our partnership with it because I want to promote resources that help you. And ZipRecruiter is a free resource. I'm, I'm not even suggesting or asking you to buy anything. That's why I love ZipRecruiter. Uh, we got an email the other day from one of our listeners, Gabriella. She said, I took Ken's advice. I went to ZipRecruiter last month. I received a call from one of their recruiters within days. I had two interviews with well-known companies, and I got the job I wanted, a job that I never thought I could land. This is from her email. Uh, it's what I enjoy doing. And the cherry on top, my starting salary is 45% more than my current salary, and I get a generous benefits package. If you want to win like Gabriella did, you need to be engaging with ZipRecruiter. As I said, it is free to you. It doesn't cost you a nickel. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken, ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken, and don't rely on just them either, okay? But you should be engaging with them because they are going to get things moving for you. Still a hot job market. Move today, ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. All right, it's time. We got a couple stories to get to in the news. All right, this is uh, under the I'm not surprised category, but we must cover it anyway. Here we go. Headline Many tech employees say they'd quit rather than being monitored during the workday. Hmm. You're telling me that adults don't want to be monitored like toddlers in the crib you're telling me this is true is this true come on folks i like to call it nanny ship it's micromanaging it's micromanaging i call it nanny ship because it's like the nanny watching your every move uh well why am i bringing this up again well it's come up because zoom and everybody found out what zoom was during the pandemic i had never heard of zoom i don't think before the pandemic but zoom is like you know, it's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. By the way, that's today's word. Use that in a sentence uh, before the week is out, and you will impress your coworkers. Uh, so a Zoom product that is being tested, uh, it is an artificial intelligence-backed system to detect a person's emotions. So it comes through their computer monitor, and it, it, and it, it tells you what their emotions are, tells leaders what. So Alex is sad. Well, first of all, we don't know Alex. Is, is Alex sad? I don't trust artificial intelligence. Is he sad or did he have a burrito for lunch? Because it could be what looks like sadness might be indigestion. That's all I'm saying. So first of all, I don't trust artificial intelligence. Secondly, this is a little bit invasive. You know, and leaders, you need to be in touch with Alex anyway to know that Alex is not actually sad Alex is hurting because something's going on with his mom's health or whatever the situation is. So you shouldn't be relying on artificial intelligence software to determine if Alex's right eyebrow went up a little too high while typing an email. You all laugh in the control room, but that's how absurd this is. So the Zoom's got a product that basically does this. Uh, and so it's, it's now raised the ire of human rights and privacy experts. Uh, a coalition of more than 20 civil rights and digital privacy groups wrote a letter calling this new potential product from Zoom invasive technology and a violation of privacy and human rights. Uh, this, this joins already existing monitoring techniques and tools that companies are using, like keystroke keystroke tracking 
Well, it's a good thing Ramsey Solutions doesn't monitor my keystrokes because I try to avoid typing like the plague. I type like a fourth grader for anybody that wants to know. Yeah. I, well, Joe, I use more than two fingers, but it's not much more. Uh, the ability for employers to remotely access your computers and take screenshots or even audio or video. Now, I, listen, I have a company computer here. And, and so, uh, you know, I can't upload anything or software on it at all without uh, one of our tech guys as an administrator. And they can they could jump into the computer if they needed to if something was going wrong. And I got no problem with that. I mean, it's their computer, so let's let's let's. Uh, I don't think that's invasive. It's the company computer. They need to be able to get in or whatever. That's fine. Uh, but but the the monitoring through the computer, well, that gets to be too much. And uh, so I wrote this phrase down, Alex, because I thought, well, we need something for leaders here. Is there leaders that are listening and watching this program? And you ought to be, by the way, because I'm dealing with people who are unhappy or disengaged. They want to leave you or they want to join you. But micromanaging leaders does not increase productivity. It decreases loyalty. Let me say it again because that is a bomb. The reason that leaders micromanage is because you're afraid. And you think micromanaging is going to make things work better. Increased efficiency, increased productivity. I got news for you. Not only does it not deliver that, it actually decreases loyalty. Because when people don't feel like you trust them, they don't trust you. Woo! We could shut the show down after that and mail that out to every leader in America. How much are you micromanaging? Because what you think is increasing productivity is decreasing loyalty. All right. Next article. This is from VentureBeat.com. Report, 42% of developers say they're considering leaving their jobs this year. Now, this is significant, not surprising. When you have almost half of the developers in America, which, by the way, developers make the world go round. This is already going to feed their oversized egos, but it's true. I mean, in the digital technology-laced world we live in, developers, well, they make everything work. They know it. Not only do they know it, they know they can do it from anywhere. So DigitalOcean did some research uh, that yielded this information, and it is a part of a lot of companies more and more daily are saying, look, you got to return to the office. Well, that's pissing off developers because, you know, they know they can work anywhere. And they're going... We've kept this thing going. We've grown it. We've done all these things. I'm, I'm coming at it from a developer's point of view right now. And they're going, I literally can do my job from here. And by the way, they're right. And let's also acknowledge, and you developers, you will acknowledge this, most of you are not interested in a lot of people interaction. Not only are you not interested in it, you're not very good at it. And that's okay. So I think leaders got to weigh this. But you got 42% of developers going, look, if you make me come back to the office, I'll quit my job. Now, here's what happens. You start seeing this, you know, musical chairs, and you got a lot of developers uniting, and you know there's some blog or some website they're all on. This could be a real leadership issue, and I think it's significant. Why are developers saying they'll quit? Uh, obviously, compensation. 27% have already started a new job in the past year. And they went for more money. There's demand for developers. They wanted remote and flexible work environments, and they wanted better benefits. So developers can demand it, and they're getting it. It's very interesting. I think it's a big leadership discussion. Who should be in? Who shouldn't have to come in? It's fascinating. All right, don't move, because we move into the coaching session of the Ken Coleman Show right after this. Did you know that just like a product, you have a personal brand? It's the image or impression others form about you based on your interactions. And whether we realize it or not, our personal brand impacts opportunities to grow in our careers. That's why our team created the Personal Brand Survey. It's free and it will give you personal and professional feedback so you can own your strengths and uncover any blind spots holding you back. To get started, 
Go to KenColeman.com slash brand. Welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. Uh, I want to get to a comment here from Duke, uh, one of our live YouTube viewers, as I think he he's right, and so I want to give Duke uh, a shout-out. His comment, why are more young people not getting into the trades? I'm a plumber making $100,000 a year in year three. I generate seven hundred fifty thousand a year for my company, and someday when I'm licensed on my own, that could go into my pocket. You better believe it, Duke. And this is the whole point of why I believe trades in our homes, in our schools, need to be talked about with a certain reverence that they've never been talked about. It's 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 a shame that politicians and bureaucrats have turned blue-collar trade work into a less-than option. And the bottom line is kids and parents are waking up to this falsehood every day. And this young man, or you know, he's a young man. I mean, he's got the potential to own his own plumbing company and be a multi-millionaire who also provides jobs and livelihood for other families. How dare you look down your nose at it? How dare you? Wake up, people. The trades are a fabulous, fabulous opportunity for people who were created to do that kind of work. So there you go. All right, let's get to Coachy. Thank you for the comment, Duke. I, I realized I was about ready to go on a tirade, and we have Grant who's standing by. So I'll I'll Put a sock on it. In it? Is it a sock in it? Is that the phrase? It's not on. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. Grant is on the line in Stratford, Connecticut. Grant, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Ken, it's great to talk to you. Grant. Uh, You might be be 48, but you're still the best dressed career coach there is. Let me tell you, I'll take it. I will take it, Grant. You made Uh my day. How can I help you, sir? Yeah, I'm calling regarding my current J-O-B. I feel like I'm being taken advantage of with some horrible bossery, and I wanted to see how I could... Uh, increase my pay while I'm trying to stick it out uh, in that get uh, qualified phase. Okay, good, spot. good. So you're where you are now, all solely because it's the rung on the ladder that you have to be on to get to the next one. Uh, yeah, it's not necessarily the right uh, rung on the ladder, but it's just the job at the moment. Uh, it's getting okay. by, it's paying the bills, but well, the reason uh, I asked not- you that, Grant, is because the way you set that up. And you said, right. you said I, I need to know how to get a raise while I'm getting qualified. So I'm trying to figure out what are we getting qualified for? Did I misunderstand you? Right, yeah. So my current J-O-B, I'm working in the billing department for a small company. I'm on the side. I'm working in a retail pursuing a certificate in project management. Oh, good. Which I, fi- I finally found uh, my sweet spot due to your Get Clear Career Assessment. Okay, great. I great see. resource. I got gotcha. you. So you're in the process of transitioning eventually into project management. Correct. Yes. It's just uh, getting qualified at the moment. Okay, great. And so what is your day job? What kind of work is it? Uh, I work in a billing department for a medical equipment company and oh. done with horrible bossery. Yeah. What's going on with the horrible bossery? I love this, by the way. Somebody who's adopted the phrase uh, horrible bossery, which is just a leader who has no idea how to lead. What's going on? What specifically are you dealing with? Right. So I've been at a company for about 10 months uh, due to the horrible boss rate. It's been pretty high turnover. They've been trying to cut costs. Uh, since I've been there, they tasked me with managing a department that deals with uh, personal emergency response equipment that a previous employee was in charge of. And then uh, a month, about a month ago, they asked me to take on a compliance role, which they usually have another full-time employee take care of that. And then on top of that, a person in the billing department left and my manager came to me and said, we're going to have you learn his workload as well. And not once through those three moves was there mention of a pay increase at all. Yeah. Uh, I'm willing to, I'm willing to do the work. Yeah. Um, it's a great job at the moment. I feel like it'd be a great transition to project management, learning all these aspects, but. Okay. So you've yet like to I've have the conversation. You've yet to sit down with the leader and go, Hey, uh, can we talk about a pay bump? You've asked me to do this, this, and this, and I've said, yes. 
or you've asked me to do it and, and, and I'm, I'm willing to roll my sleeves up and do it. Uh, but what's that look like financially? Have you had that conversation? No, not from my end about the pay increase. No, but they came to me telling me to take on these responsibilities and I wasn't going to tell them no, but, uh, just, you know, pay was never mentioned looking back on it. I'm trying to see if there's any way I can reconcile it. And try you sure to... can. It's called a meeting. It's called a conversation. Okay. You should have brought it up initially. Yes, you're right. You should have. Um, because here's the deal. Horrible bossery doesn't think about people. Horrible right. bossery only thinks about progress. And so they came to you and they had a problem, right? Let's just call it a a, a, a hole in the dam, right? And they're like, all yep. right, we need Grant to stick his finger in this hole and then this hole and this hole. That, that's what happened. And they're only thinking about the leak in the dam. They're not thinking about Grant. And you didn't make them think about... Now, no, let, let, me, let me stop. They may have thought about you and went, we can't pay him, so we're not going to bring it up. We'll just see how he reacts. That could have been their posture. Or they could have been like, we're not going to bring up pay unless Grant does. Let's just see if we can get him to do it, see if he'll say yes. But by you not saying anything at all, even in the form of a question, like, okay, guys, how long would I be filling in on this role and this other role? And it, because I'm increasing my work, what is the increase in my compensation? Those would have been the two questions. Right. By the way, you can still ask those questions. You got to go, hey, look, guys, honestly, I I'm a people pleaser. And I didn't want to say no. I like I like the job. I want to be here. And so I said yes, but it's it's affecting me because I've increased my workload and I haven't increased my income. And I want to be valuable and I want to move up here, but I is there, you know, what what can we do here? And I think you have to put the ball in their lap. You don't, you don't, you know, you don't come across angry. You don't come across entitled. You're just concerned and you're, and you're communicating effectively and make them respond to you. Now, when you do that, and again, they are horrible. They should have brought it up, but, yep. but they didn't. But now you got to bring it up. And now we really know what we're dealing with, because let me just ask you, this puts you on the spot. What happens when you bring this up to them and they literally say nothing back to you other than just, we can't do it right now. Sorry, man. What does that mean for you? Let's get uh, real. Yeah, that's a red flag for sure. Well, it's um, not just a red flag. What does it mean for you? How long are you going to stay there? Uh, hopefully as um, less time I can. <laughs> that's my point. Yeah. I knew the answer to that. I wanted you to say it. You have right. to confront this because you're not going to continue to do this extra work and not get paid extra. You know it and I know it. So let's rip the band-aid yeah. off. Because here's the deal, Grant. You're in a very hot market, job market, and you need to be in a place to where you feel valued and you have an opportunity to move up. I mean, because, you know, if, if you come back and go, you know what, Ken, I can do it for six more months, but only six more months, so I'll do it if they don't say what I want them to say, because I'm moving into project management, I can transition out of this role and use this on my resume, then I'd be fine with that. But again, that's all because it's an exit strategy. Right. So is that what you needed to hear? Anything else? Absolutely. No, that, that's a great point you brought up. I feel like I was, uh, I didn't want to say no at the time. I feel like I'd be, you know, not capable enough, but uh, looking back on it, I see how and you've I was done it. To be a people pleaser. Yep. You've you filled the gaps, haven't you? I have. Yeah. They know it, and you know it. You got leverage, my man. So the key to this whole discussion is humility. Tell them the truth. I said yes because I wanted to be a good team player, and I now realize that, you know, it's just a natural tension that anybody has when you take on more responsibility. You don't get paid. If it's short term and there's no other options, that's called being a good person and a good teammate. I think I'm both of those. But there's no end in sight. I didn't ask enough questions. I need to ask these questions. We need to communicate on this so that I can be the best impossible employee. This is real. And you're going to find out real quick if they're decent people. This is the Ken Coleman Show.
If the thought of attending a networking event makes you break out in hives, you're not alone. And I'll let you in on a secret. Networking in the traditional sense doesn't work, but genuine connection is all about relationships. That's why we created Networking the Right Way. This free guide is the low pressure, high impact way to overcome the awkwardness, build real relationships, and turn your connections into opportunities. To get the guide, go to kencolman.com slash network. Welcome back to The Ken Coleman Show, where we coach you to have the competitive edge to make more money and make more impact. And you know what that's going to mean for you? You're going to enjoy going in on Mondays because you're going to be crushing it. And, and, and when it's time to go home on Fridays, it's not, oh, I just barely made it. It's, hey, this is a good week. I went hard. It's like a good workout. I had a good workout. Now I need to rest and recuperate. And that's the idea. It's very achievable. Because I want you to get to the end of your journey and look back and say, you know what? I filled the role that I was created to fill in my professional life and in my personal life. And, and I can reminisce. It was a good run. I made an impact. It was a good run. I'm reminiscing, not regretting. 844-747-2577 is the phone number. 844-747-2577. Uh, we have a fun little uh, treat at the end of the show today. That's all I'll say. A little vacation photos and videos. So there you go. That'll be fun. Melinda's up in Germantown, Maryland. Melinda, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Yeah. I'm in the job market because I'm really looking for a work-life balance, what you just mentioned about having time to kind of rest and recharge. I don't have that where I currently am. And I'm wondering, what's the best way to really communicate that in an interview without, you know, sounding like, for lack of a better word, lazy. Yeah. <laughs> or, or feeling like you're going to look stack up well against other candidates. Yeah, I, I think for you, you have to ask questions that are indirect, that mm -hmm. are going to get you the answers that you're looking for. So we don't mention things like work-life balance. I wouldn't mention it because it's become code for different things. As you mentioned, someone can take it the wrong way. Someone could take it the right way. But uh, let me just also say this. There's no such thing as work-life balance. In fact, we don't, we don't, we weren't put on this planet to wake up one day and go, you know what? I've achieved work-life balance. No, <laughs> no, no, no. We were put on this earth to contribute, to contribute mm -hmm. relationally and to contribute professionally. So what do you want your work? What do you want work life to be? Well, you know, you listen to the show, you watch the show, you want to spend the majority of your day using your talent, what you do best, to do work you love, passion, to produce results that motivate you every day. That's mission. So that's what you want out of work from a high level. Professionally and personally, you 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 want to have some home life, right? You, you want to be yes. able to spend time with the people you love. So the questions you ask in the interview are not like, what's work-life balance? Or you don't even go that direction. You just go, hey, what's a typical day and look like? And what's a typical week look like? What's the culture here around, um, you know, expectations on nights and weekends on communication? You know, these are real questions that seem very thoughtful. They don't seem right. lazy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think you also have been burned on this. So yes. what, let's go back to your past experience that wasn't so good that ate into your home life or your relationship life. What was going on? Well, I think right now my current co company, like a lot, are struggling with staffing and yeah. churn. And so those of us that are, you know, ex uh, experienced existing employees are having to pick up a lot of the slack. So how is that affecting um, your personal life? Um, well, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm working like 60 hours a week for the past four months. So Exactly. That means you're taking mm -hmm. work home with you or you're not getting home late or you're getting home later or going in earlier. Mm-hmm. Okay. So for you, you're asking questions like, what's the, what's the, um, what's the staffing situation like here? You know, what's the, what's the workflow look like? You know, you're getting this manager, you're asking indirect questions that are directly related to you going, is everybody catching plates falling off the wall? <laughs> or, right. or is this a, a, an organization that is staffed properly? 
and run yeah. properly. That's the point mm-hmm. I'm making. You don't have to mention work-life balance because in some ways that's like a yes or no question that anybody can lie to you on. You know, it's like look at right. a person going in an interview. I tell leaders, don't ask stupid yes or no questions in interviews like this one. Do you consider yourself a hard worker? Well, what? who's, who's going to answer that? No. You've not learned anything about that person. Mm-hmm. But if you want to determine a person's work ethic, you go, hey, how do you respond to to projects and to tasks that pile up every once in a while and require you to have to do more than you normally do? Like, that's a question. And now we get somebody talking. And so in your interview process, you're just asking those questions that I highlighted moments ago. And, and you know how to do your own detective work and figure out has the place is the place you're looking at staffed properly and run properly that that's really the two questions and you can ask a lot of questions to figure that out also talk to people who work there or know people that work there that's the real answer that you're looking for so you can do this melinda you got it this is the ken coleman show So you just landed the new job. Congratulations. You've made it past the interviews and now it's time to onboard with excellence. That's why I created How to Stand Out at Your New Job. This free checklist will help you succeed from day one and may even help you get promoted. These practical steps set you up to add value, help your team win, exceed your leader's expectations, and ultimately set you up for a successful transition. To get started, just go to kencoleman.com slash new. y'all doing out there everybody doing all right good every once in a while i like to throw one of those out there people are listening or watching some dude's on his treadmill later and he's like what, 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 what? Listen, just make sure everybody's paying attention out there uh hey i'm very excited uh we are piloting a program called ramsey career coaching largely because i want to be able to extend the help and the coaching that we do here on the show uh, out to anybody. You know, some people can't call in. Some people won't call in. Some people need more than what I can give in a five or six minute call. I get that. And uh, as we have done for many decades now, we have Ramsey financial coaches who help people in their finances. And so I've assembled a team of world class uh, career and life coaches, uh, executive coaches. They do it all. They're very experienced. These men and women share the values of Ramsey Solutions, myself, the show. And uh, we, uh, have opened this up and a lot of people kicking the tires. It's not for everybody. Uh, a little bit more commitment, but it's investing in you. Uh, but boy, does it pay off. Uh, and so we've limited the space to 30 participants. They're, they're going. We still have uh, people kicking tires and looking, but we're over halfway there. Uh, and so this is a pilot program and uh, very excited about this. So if you're interested in getting a coach to walk alongside of you for three, six months, nine months, 12 months, uh, it always pays off. Everybody needs a coach. Go to kencoleman.com slash coaching, kencoleman.com slash coaching. And a little fun way to end the show today. You don't want to miss it. Nathan and the team, have, we've compiled some vacation videos of me swimming with the dolphins. You won't want to miss this. It is, uh, it's entertaining. I don't know if it's anything more than that. Uh, but it is fun, and we'll show you that at the end of the show today. But let's get to Rachel, who joins us in Cleveland, Ohio. Rachel, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thanks for taking my call. You bet, Rachel. What's up? Um, I'm run into a situation. Um, I have worked in higher education for almost 40 years. Wow. Doing what? Yeah. <laughs> um, I am a data analyst. Okay, great. And anyway, um, some t- um some new leadership came in and um, some changes are happening. And okay. one of the things that's happening is reorganization. I do not agree with the new leadership and what they are planning. And so emotionally, I'm like, I'm done. Yeah. So anyway, the problem is I'm in my early 60s. And I don't think I could find another career given I'm in my early 60s. Whoa, stop. So stop, I feel stop, like stop, I'm going to be stuck. Stop. <laughs> Why? What What evidence do you have? I mean evidence, not your opinion, not your fears. What evidence do you have that someone with your experience 
And as a data analyst, which, by the way, is, is about as relevant as a job in today's world as, as anything that's out there, uh, what, what evidence do you have that you won't be able to get a job because you're in your early 60s? I guess I don't have any solid evidence. I guess one of the things I was afraid of was that when I do a resume and it says that I have my bachelor's degree and I had it in 1982. Nobody cares. To figure out. Nobody cares. Nobody cares where you got your bachelor's degree or when you got it. Okay. Now, if someone is just scanning your resume and they see that you graduated in 1982 and they see somebody else graduated in uh, 1992 or 2002, I'm not saying that 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 ageism doesn't exist it does but what i am saying is is that nobody really cares about that because if they get a narrative and a full picture of rachel from a real person in a contact that says rachel's a rock star and she's just getting out of the higher ed space and she's a wildly experienced fantastic lady well then they don't care about where you went to school when you went to school Okay. Okay. Cause I, I guess I just thought that, um, they would see a person my age that might not stay with them very long because I be, I'm so close to retirement. Okay. I guess that's why I was thinking. <laughs> but, but here's my point that could, someone could think that. Okay. But not someone who is in dire need of a data analyst in today's marketplace. They can't get They can't get people. They can't hire fast enough. Am I right? That's correct. Rachel, so you got to go and find companies in the Cleveland, Ohio area or wherever else you want to go in the United States. You're not limited to that unless you choose to be. But if you want to stay in Cleveland, you go, okay, well, look at all the data analyst positions or something that is similar enough that all of my data analyst experience and all of my skill set makes me a natural fit for this. And they're looking for people. And then you go, all right, I'm going to start reaching out to people that I know that know somebody over there in that organization. Because Okay. Yes, you're in your early 60s, but I want you to reframe this because the reality is, is you have a lot of experience, 40 years of experience, 40 years of skill, and oh, by the way, 40 years of relationships. Right. Rachel, okay. I don't want you submitting resumes blindly. I want you getting people to submit your resume for you. Work relationships and connections to where somebody goes, are you kidding me? Rachel's ready to go today. I can get somebody who's a veteran in the locker room, who's a great culture person, high character person. I just think, think you have to reframe what you have going for you. You got to find okay. the person who'd rather have the 60-year-old data analyst instead of the 20-year-old because they're out there too. Okay. You got this? Yes. I was just going, since I've been in the, the field for so long, I just thought... I mean, I just remember years ago, it was just like, you know, know, we had to put the, you know, so but I'm playing on, you know, sending yeah. my resume through ZipRecruiter. You know, I didn't say it was going to be easy and I didn't say it was going to be automatic. Right. Exactly. But I'm saying it is very possible, but you can't rely on the, on the 30 year old strategy The 30 year olds just submit resumes all day and hope somebody calls them. That's not going to work, but I don't recommend that for anybody. So you got this. Hang on the line, Rachel. I want to give you a copy of my number one best-selling book, The Proximity Principle. Let's, all, let's also give her a paycheck to purpose, which is the full guide. She can give that to someone else if she'd like. But uh, you got to use the proximity principle. It works every time. In fact, I just met before the show today a young gal who joined our team in April, and she listened to the show, Alex. And she up and moved to Tennessee uh, because she had a brother close by and worked the relationships through him and got the job here. She saw me in the hallway. She said, I got to tell you, the proximity principle works. I go, I know. So glad you're here. All right. So a little bit of fun here. Uh, th th this is largely a nod to our YouTube audience, uh, you know, because this is video. We got a picture too. So this is, this is for our YouTube folks that watch uh, and largely our YouTube crazies that they, uh, stalk me on Instagram and, and I, I'm okay with it. So we were in Cabo San Lucas last week with the whole fam. Um, and what's the first video we're going to show here? Life. Okay. So lifelong dream as a kid, I wanted to swim with dolphins. And so my wife and I found a great dolphin experience excursion. And so, uh, we did all the things with the family. And then at the end, my wife goes, Hey, I got a surprise for you, babe. 
you get to swim with Kalia the dolphin. And this is a quick clip. Let's watch this. She's upside down there. And I'm grabbing onto her fins, and she's swimming upside down, and I'm basically on her like she's a raft. So there that is. Uh, and there's the dancing video. So she said, this was fun. Uh, she just propped up in the water there, and the, this is the first thing I did with her. And so the guy goes, grab her fins, and now we're going to dance. And he gave her commands. Do we not have audio for that? We didn't. Okay. The audio is hilarious because my wife is cackling in the background as I swim with the dolphin. And uh, then we got a quick pick here. This is the, who is this? Is this the whole fam? Oh, this is me getting a kiss from Kalea. Uh, outside of Josie, uh, my daughter, my wife, Stacy, and my mom. It's the only female that gets to give me a smooch. But Stacy was okay with it. She was right there in the pool. But sweet. And I got to tell you all, um, I share this because it had nothing to do with professional dream, but as a kid, I had dreamed about swimming with a dolphin. And when I did, Alex, I got a little choky choky. Uh, I'm not boohooing in the pool, but I mean, it was really special. It was very powerful. And uh, I thought it was great fun. And the next book title is, you got that? Is that up on the screen? From Paycheck to Porpoise. That's very good. Very creative, guys. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, it was great fun. Can't wait to do it again. Uh, next time I want to somehow hold on to the thing or try to, when it jumps out of the pool, I think that would be great fun for all involved. All right, I got to get out of here. But before I do, remember this, you matter. You have what it takes. Press on. Thanks for listening to The Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts and watch the show on YouTube. You can also find Ken across all social media by following at Ken Coleman.